Mark, it, we returned to football last weekend, but you know that later that evening, you know, we everything became a lot more serious because we found out about the tragic events over in Fourbury Gardens, you know, right in the heart of, of Reading. When did when did you become aware of the situation? Well, I, I first became aware of it on uh, Saturday night when news was breaking and uh, absolute uh, absolute tragedy. And obviously, your thoughts go to the to the people, the family, the friends of everybody. Um, you know, especially you know, happening so close to, to home, if you like. So, you know, very much as well speaking to the players. The players uh, this week have been aware of you know the, the feelings towards the whole situation. We played a game on uh, a friendly game Monday here against Oxford, and straight away we, we had a minute silence uh, before that. And uh, you know, the week's gone on. It's, it's been difficult because of the, the you know travelling away at Derby at the weekend, but hopefully before. Um, before Monday's game against Brentford, again we'll we'll play our pay our due respects uh, the best way we can to the victims, and there'll be you know thoughts thoughts and prayers. It's um, sort of situations where you know it, things become, as I say, you know brings a community together in, in in a weird way. People rally around and, and show their resilience, don't they? You know, in a town and a community. Yeah, and, and that, that's a natural thing to happen. Is in the, the the Reading community will will pull together. And they'll have the, the thoughts and best wishes of everybody else, but when it you know when it happens, so to speak, in your own in your own backyard, it, it, it tends to hit hit home harder, if you like. So, um, as I said, they're in our thoughts, they're in our prayers, and uh, and we'll hopefully give them um, the due respect that, you know, when, when we come to our next home game. We go away this weekend to Derby. You've been preparing out in this blistering heat, probably a bit too hot for <laughs> summer holiday weather, but I'm sure you, you see them as a very dangerous opponent. Yeah, I mean, I thought they had a fan fantastic result, obviously, away at uh, Millwall the weekend. It showed that the quality that they've got with Wayne Rooney back into the side now and, and pulling the strings at the back for them. They'll be a formidable force for us. But, you know, we go into the game, you know, we take the positives and lo load of positives at the home game the weekend in Stoke. We'll go there. Hopefully, the sun won't be as as, as high in the sky. Let's say on Saturday, one o'clock, and I think they're, they're saying it'll be a cooler day, which I think they'll be as much happy about that as us. But uh, yeah, we'll have a game plan, and we've got to make sure we go there and exercise it, and keep our concentration levels high, and come away with a win. Hopefully. And you mentioned some of those talents as well, Wayne Rooney, and you know the striker Louis Sibley who got his hat trick as a young lad, and I guess having got individuals, but but also a, yeah, a good team as well there, all over. Yeah, as I say, a lot of the play seems to go through Wayne, naturally so, because the talent he's got and the, you know, the young lads come in, scored a hat-trick at the week, weekend, Sibley, so we've got to keep an eye on him. But they've, they've got ammunition through this side, like we have. I see it as being a fairly even, balanced game. I thought you know, the, the game that uh, certainly I was in charge of uh, the back oh, a few months ago at home, we got away with it a little bit then. Yeah, we played well, but I think they got a man sent off as well, so it made, uh, made it easier for us. But... Again, we're under no illusions. We go there with a with a hard task at hand, but I think we've got the quality to, to really make make a difference and take the game to them, which we'll be hoping to do. You'll be coming up against Philip Koku. I, I understand that you might have met him in an international fixture before, and uh, you know you represented in Wales here yeah. in the Netherlands. Yeah. I understand the scoreline was a little bit lopsided in favour of the. <laughs> I was only one to remind me of that. Yeah, yeah, that was a, one one of the times Wales played Holland. I think we got beat seven one at the time. And believe me, Neville South was man of the match, so it shows how bad Wales were on the day. But uh, no, I've played against him a few times. Uh, I think I played against him for Norwich City in the UEFA mm. Cup when uh, they play, he played for Vitesse Arnhem. So we've had a few tussles through the years. But uh, in a managerial capacity, uh, I'm one up against him at the moment. So after you know a few months ago, so we'll be looking to carry that on. But as I say, it's, uh, he's a good coach, he's a good guy, and uh, I say they'll be buoyant on the back of the last week's uh, result against Millwall. We've got to make sure we are our best. Can I just touch on the game here on Monday too? That must have been a useful exercise in, in general, getting players you know, who had been on the fringes a bit more, a little bit of uh, game time. Yeah, Richie, listen, it, it can sometimes uh, can be a problem because we organise the game to get 90 minutes or a lot of minutes into the players who, who, who hadn't played the weekend. But sometimes in doing that, you, you can catch a bit of a cold because you know if we get a few injuries and anything happens on the day, then you, know, you haven't got many subs to bring on. So you're always a little bit fingers crossed that you get through it, but but the key was that once we did get through it, I knew that come if you like Tuesday afternoon, that all my players had had good minutes and they're ready to go. And you know, I continually seen to our guys now. We looked at the Premier League games that have happened so far. A lot of managers have made changes game on game. I think we're a little bit lucky this week because we've got a full week between obviously Stoke and, and going to Derby. But you know, after the weekend with Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday every week. 
you know, and with you know the the, the coronavirus testing, we might lose players as well. So, you know, I've got a big squad, but you need it at times, I guess, because I, I can see nearly every player I've got playing a part at some some time or another. And that squad, as you mentioned lastly here, is that yeah, you've got a lot of players to choose from. The only sort of doubts, if you like, were that Andy yardam has been injured uh, going into this restart, and, and Lucas was, came off injured in the game last weekend against Stoke. How are those two getting on? We've had uh, one or two. Andy Adams had a little bit of a hamstring, a tight hamstring more than anything else. And I dare say, listen, if it, it was a if it was a cup final uh, on Saturday, then he'd be pushing for a start. But uh, you know, I'm very got to be mindful if you start him and then with the game on Tuesday. So we'll give him maybe those extra few days to recover. You know, Matt Miaz got a tight hamstring as well, but he's back in the fold for you know for, for selection at the weekend. Uh, the biggest one we've had, obviously, is the news with Lucas Joao. Um, pulled up and went off at the weekend and it did affect us you know our, the way our, our, we were flowing at the time and we found out with Lucas he, he's got a it's not what we're told it's not connected to the under injury he had maybe as a, a slight uh, result of it in terms of his, his biomechanics and how it affected him in the game but I'm being told that maybe three weeks and he'll be back so we certainly haven't written him off for the rest of this this season but we'll have to monitor him and see how he goes.